Hey everybody, here we are on another build for Hardcore League Season 9. This one is really cool. This is Shadowheart, the Cleric of Shar build, and it is modeled after Shadowheart from Baldur's Gate 3, one of the most iconic characters from that game with one of the best story arcs. If you get to play Baldur's Gate, you will meet Shadowheart really early in the game and then her story goes through all the different acts and is some very good writing. So she is a cleric of Shar. Now we don't have Shar in the game for us. Shar exists in the Forgotten Realms and we can fight against clerics of Shar, but we cannot actually be clerics of Shar ourselves. So we are using sort of a modified build where we are getting creative with the domain. So in Baldur's Gate, Shadowheart is a cleric of Shar initially, and she is in the trickster domain. In DDO, the trickster domain is not very good at all. So for Hardcore League, we are going to use a domain that is in line with a cleric of Shar, which is the death domain. One of the most Amazing things about this domain for Hardcore League is the fact that it gives you negative energy immunity at level 9. So you will be immune to energy drain when you go up against those beholders. You won't have to worry about getting enervated or level drained to death. So that is really cool. It also makes it so that you turn undead at a higher level and you have a chance to destroy them. And it gives you a really good SLA of necrotic ray which is hits really hard so we're doing sort of a modified the other way that we modified we could not select shar as a god and we could have gone with the sovereign host so you could do sovereign host because technically the sovereign host is every god so i chose the blood of vol which is closest we can get as players to an evil aligned in Eberron. Um, but like I said, you could also do the Sovereign Host if you wanted to get the heal that comes with the Sovereign Host. I We're just basically making it up as we go now. So Shadowheart is a half-elf, and I decided to do a Warlock Dilettante as the half-elf in DDO. This is not from Baldur's Gate at all, but the reason why I chose to do it here in DDO is because this will give us extra damage on our attacks that we activate. You have to drag this to the bar and then turn it on, and so now we get extra damage. So I'll have the build posted. We're not really going much into the half-elf tree. We do get some wisdom and we get a little bit of spell points from in increasing our dilettante, but that's pretty much it. The build is similar to our favorite soul, and we are going to wind up in War Priest, 41 points, Wisdom. We will have access to Divine Intervention, which makes this very strong. Divine Intervention will make you immune to many, many of the death effects that exist in DDO. And then, because we are immune at level 9 to negative energy drain so we don't have to worry about being enervated we can skip doing anything in vistani and we're going to go all fade arc illusionist for all of the yummy defensives that we get out of here the extra wisdom the finding traps and so this from this tree we get sort of our trickery domain things where we'll you know you can take if you want distract um, you can take the Shadow Blades. So it really, you know, not only is it re really good, you you know, you guys know I like to use this tray, use it all the time. We'll have our color spray. We're eventually going to have 31 points, so we'll have enlarge as well on our spells. Uh, the gear that I'm wearing right now on the Shadow Heart build is the same gear that I've been wearing for all the others. I'm using a Queen Scepter and a Hexbreaker. She's wearing the snow scale armor. I've got a seven piece Feywild set going. And the reason I'm doing that is because for our purposes here, if you are playing on the hardcore league and you are going for 5k favor, you want to farm for yourself as many pieces of the Feywild that you can. So 
I'm assuming that you would have a seven piece on hardcore, which is why I am playing with that. But this is still a first life tune. I also have the Battle Worn Medallion, which I, I slotted with the Master's Gift. You won't have that on a Hardcore League. You just have to go to Talera and get the, the trinket from Talera. These goggles you can get on the Hardcore League uh, very easily. You just have to farm the Borderlands. They are the goggles of Unbroken Sight. They're really great because they have a yellow slot, and the yellow slot allows you to use helpful topazes for the hardcore league so if you didn't have a feather falling item you could slot a feather falling topaz in it like i did and all of the other gear is the same from the previous build the cloak of winter the thorn boots the black dragon scale tacit belt which gives us haste anytime we kill something the gloves of tranquility which are really sort of a melee item but i like the blur and regeneration for hardcore league so if you could farm these out they also have a yellow slot and the ring we're very the nocturne ring which gives us true seeing and we also have the bottled sunlight necklace and the crown of snow our spell selection we went with all of the good yummy Holy Smite as soon as we got level 4. Searing Light as soon as we got level 3. At level 2, our first spell is Sound Burst. So, you know, we, we ramp up our DPS as we go. Probably the most useful level 1s are Night Shield and Divine Favor early because you're probably going to be hitting things with a melee weapon when you're very low level. Also, Command is very helpful, especially if you are playing elite or reaper because you can command reapers you can command champions um remove fear is something that you want to take if you're not immune to fear we get fear immunity from reality bulwark but i take it just so i can cast it on somebody if they need it we take lesser restoration because it's always helpful to have that spawn screen because that will help you it when you're fighting against shadows that drain your strength uh it, it won't prevent the strength drain but it will keep you from dying at once you hit zero and turning into a shadow but much better to use death ward which we take as soon as we can get that so the first one we take is holy smite then we take death ward because holy smite does a lot of aoe damage we're also using Mass Aid and Circle Against Evil, and then we have Energy Resist to cast for specific energy that we need. And then our Enhancements, pretty, pretty standard. She is wearing the Season 3 rewards. She's got the 10 Reaper Point Cloak on. She's got... The helm right there. Very pretty. She's riding on the horse. So we will do this, the same quest that we've been doing. Now, this quest assumes a four level split. It may be that they announce that there's a two level split. And if that's the case, then I will try to remake some of these videos before Hardcore League starts in order to demonstrate that the builds are pretty strong uh, in the sense that I think you could easily play them with a two-level split. But for our purposes, we're going to demonstrate this as a four-level split. So this on Elite is level five. We are level seven. The base level of the quest is three. And the biggest downside of this is that we run out of mana very quickly. So I also have on Death Block of Dodge Bracers, which if this were Hardcore League, you absolutely want to wear Death Block as soon as you can get it. Death, Death Ward is very helpful. Death Block is essential.
So we're going to do the same strategy that we've been doing. We're going to gather all this stuff up because we're alone, color spray it, and then I'm just going to hit it with a couple of AoE spells. You can see how good Holy Smite still is, even though they nerfed it. And then that was my SLA for Necrotic Ray. It hits really strong. I have it in power maximized quicken. I have no other meta magics on because it's just too expensive, but I do have color spray quicken. The models for Path Elf look really good. They they refreshed them. I hope that they keep continue to refresh the models. One of the wonderful things about playing Baldur's Gate is how amazing the graphics are and how pretty everything is over there. So it would be really nice if they updated some of the graphic models over here. The other thing, too, is that they announced that Myth Draenor perhaps is the next expansion that we're getting, and that is in the Forgotten Realms. So that means that they may revisit the Forgotten Realms, which means that they may refresh the Forgotten Realms artwork that they used. Is that Forgotten Realms content for DDO hasn't been updated in a very long time, and that was originally created, I believe, in 2010. I want to say somewhere around there. It's quite old now, so... The artwork was different back then for Forgotten Realms for 3.0 and 3.5. It's different now. The artwork now is sort of less cartoony. So you can see this, um, this SLA we get in the death domain hits very hard. Of course, I hit the torch. <laughs> we'll try it again. There we go. Hit him for almost a thousand. They point to an eerie glow in the distance to the west, near an abandoned port. Uh, it's negative energy, though, so you cannot use that on undead, but... Everything else. But for the undead, we have nine turn undeads, so we could, you know, we could attempt to turn... The second shrine falls to pieces. So this is a very solid, very fun, you have a lot of survivability, you have a lot of utility for your group. So I'm using a Queen Scepter now that does not have a Meteoric Star Ruby, so we, we can get a more of a sense of what it's like for playing on the Hardcore League because you wouldn't have access to a Meteoric Star Ruby, likely, on Hardcore League. And you could, but it would take some work to get one. We have 50% mana left, so we're doing pretty well on our mana usage. And... Color spray, sound burst, holy smite, and that gets them all. It's pretty lethal. Problem is, some of these mobs hang around in the swamp. Okay, there we go. Sound burst, holy smite. And now we'll just clean up the stragglers that we missed with our SLA. Uh, Searing Light hits really well, too, you can see. I just hit that for almost 200. So, And that is not... There's no metamagics on it, so it hits really well. So what I'm going to do for these two is open with a Sound Burst. Got the stun. I'm going to color spray them, sound burst them again, and then hit them with Holy Smite. And then I'm going to use my SLA to clean it up. And if he becomes un... 
yeah, I got them before. I was going to color spray them again if I had to. But So we have two very solid CCs. We have our sound burst, which is very solid as a, as a crowd control. And then we have our color spray. So parties will appreciate you because you will be able to help crowd control. Not everything is CC'd by Soundburst or Color Spray, but enough of the content is... Again, if you were fighting undead, you could not CC it with either of those, but you do have Turn Undead for those situations. Okay, we use our SLA, killed that champion, and then Searing Light. Once we get Divine Intervention at level 12, that makes everything much better for Hardcore League because we can inoculate ourselves against certain death conditions. And I've said it before, but if you do the quest in Meridia where Garko, where you have to fight the kobold that's riding around in the red gelatinous cube of death, uh, divine intervention will keep you alive. If you run into that, it makes you immune to that death effect. As of the past, now they may change that for future hardcore leagues, I would be wary anyway around it because it is a death effect uh so no if you if you put divine intervention on yourself run right into that and die that's on you i recommend that you don't do that but it is a good idea to have divine in intervention cast it on yourself and it's got a a cooldown you can cast it on a friend so I believe it lasts for three minutes and it or maybe it lasts for five minutes and you can cast it every three minutes or something like that. But very useful. Color spray these two again. Get behind him. Sound burst and holy smite. We'll use our SLA on this straggler. We're doing pretty well with our mana. But like I said, this is the the one downside of this build is that you go through mana very quickly. So you want to be aware of that. Unless you have deep pockets and you can buy yourself a lot of spell point potions. So we have 40% mana to do the last fight. That should be plenty. We'll do the same strategy. I'm going to open with a sound burst, try to lock them all down. And then loop back, get color spray, and hit him with another sound burst, and then I'll holy smite. That got them all. And then for the boss, we'll use our SLA. To worry about the water weird behind me, so I'll hit him with the SLA as well. The SLA only costs eight spell points. So whenever I can, that's my go-to. You know, if they're not immune to necrotic energy, then they're getting that. And, but the pro only problem with it is single target. But as a ray, it goes quite far. So that's that. Uh, you could make her a cleric with blonde hair of Saluna. 
if you wanted to modify the build a little bit and put yourself into the light domain, that would also work for the build and keep everything else in line with what I'm going to post. Uh, it's up to you based on how you play Baldur's Gate uh, without giving away any spoilers. She could be either Char or Saluna. But I hope you guys enjoy this one. I think it's great. And I hope you get to play Night Revels. And we'll see you soon for Hardcore League Season 9. Hey there. Thanks for watching. To support the channel and help, please like the video. It also helps a lot with YouTube. If you subscribe to the channel, it will help me to make more content if you do. Uh, another way to support is to donate through my PayPal. If you play DDO or are looking to play Dungeons and Dragons Online Hardcore, there's one place you need to be, and that is my Death Smile Hardcore Discord. It is a Discord community created for players of Hardcore DDO. Everyone is welcome. The server is open to everyone, and we are getting close to a 1,000 members. On the server, you'll find lots of helpful information and easy access to notes, builds, other players who are looking for groups and who are talking about different quests and how to complete them safely. You may also be a streamer, and you can request from me a streamer role, and I will give you a streamer rank and a custom channel for you to link your content so viewers can find you. We have discussion channels for all things hardcore, what quests to skip, what quests give the best loot, what builds are good for what, and if you are looking for any help, it is a great place for resources. The link is in the description below.